a top five and nothing else on episode 284 of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Hello everybody, welcome to episode 284 of the Unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. I'm Tracy, and with me I have Lee. Hello everyone. I have Darren. What's up internet? And I have Chris. Hey guys. How is everybody? I'm hungry. Ooh. Hungry? Yeah. Mm, I could eat. No, I am. <laughs> right, carve some pizza. No, uh, no. No. I'll be surprised no, if anyone's got pizza. Weird stuff on your pizza, like mayonnaise and hot dogs and stuff. Don't what? You? I don't think I've ever had a pizza with mayonnaise on it. Okay, now you guys. Okay, good. Hot dogs, yes. <laughs> hot dogs, though. Okay, uh, I have hot dogs on a pizza. Mm. We have a uh, Domino's pizza over here that puts hot dogs in their stuffed crust. I think, Darren, we I have that over here. But they did it once. Yeah, yeah. It was okay. Just because it's so popular over there. They tried mm. it over here, and everybody was like, no. <laughs> they sold three of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we put chips on a pizza, or fries, as you would call them. I mean, the food, food, food good. Yes. Anyway, oh, yeah. so yes, we're all hungry, which is quite fitting. Because today we are looking at our top five places to eat in Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure. It's well, a great show to put on when everybody has their New Year's resolutions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, the thing was, I, I, I was going to include City Walk, but then I felt that it wasn't fair for me and Tracy to include City Walk because there's two that I think potentially would be in our top five that we haven't done in Toothsome and Vivo. So in other words, yeah. surprisingly, we're flying out next week to try them and then we can do another top five. I would love to. <laughs> no, I'm not that for the guy. Sorry about that. <laughs> You can just jet set out here whenever you'd like. Unfortunately, not. <sighs> no. Lee won't sell a kid, Lee. He's so mean. <laughs> I'll sell a kid. <laughs> well, you got you could sell a kid and the other one's kid's knee. No, I'd sell both of them. I can't sell him now. He's 18. His knee's his own oh, thing. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> he escaped. Unfortunately. Dark nabbit. <laughs> right. Okie dokie. Right, let's go in reverse order. Well, as what, what was the criteria? Because you sort of had a go at me. Because originally it was going to be just restaurants and then it kind of evolved. You just make up your own rules and confuse us all. You know. So the criteria is basically anywhere within the parks that you can eat, whether it's a sit-down restaurant, quick service, um, a snack cart. An ice cream shop. Ice cream shop. And just late in the day, after being told I wasn't allowed. No, I, mm, uh, anyway. but you did. No, I didn't. You we said you can't have that listen. because it. Do not talk to me about not listening, dear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, such thin ice. <laughs> I wasn't allowed snookers and snookers because it was a sweet shop. Even though we did have a bag of but sweets then, for lunch yeah, one but day. Then I said that to is still a meal. All right, then you can have it. That is still a meal. Anyway, sugar. But it's okay because I honkers. don't want it now. And honkers, honkers, honk, honk, honkers. Honk, honk, honk. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, basically, if you've eaten there and you've got an opinion, then have at it. So, number five, okay. we shall start at the bottom and work our way up. We will have honourable mentions at the end, mm -hmm. which basically is everywhere else that I've eaten. So I thought this was a good way of introducing Chris into the show a little bit as well and getting a feel for his likes and dislikes. It's an easy show to, to warm him up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Who shall we start with? Chris. Oh. Sad. Let's chuck you in at the deep end. What's your Let's number five? Oop. So number five, I picked Mythos. Whoa, Ooh. that's low yes. down. And and here's the reason why, right? So Mythos. Good food. Yeah, we've eaten there before. Loved it. Um, aside from the food, the actual restaurant, the view is amazing. You can have a great view of the park if you sit outside. The inside looks like a ride. Um, but I put it there to number five just because it's on the pricier side. So it's not a place that we go to really often. And uh, if you have like a large family, obviously it'll it'll, it'll get to you. But, um, but yeah, that's my number five. Also weird bathrooms. The bathrooms oh, are awesome. I'm amazed at how much the bathrooms look like kitchens. 
<laughs> no one has a clue what you're talking about. <laughs> Every time I go to the bathroom in there, I go through the wrong door and end up in the kitchen. Every yeah. single time. And I ask directions. Every single time. It is very hard to find your way around in there. Yes. And it's hard to give directions, too. It's like, okay, go around yeah. the weird bulb thing and have an aquarium <laughs> In there, uh, yeah. across, that, across that small lake. Yeah. <laughs> My advice: use the restroom before you go in. Yeah. <laughs> and don't drink anything. But yeah, I'm not going to say too much on it because I have no doubt. About that, <laughs> no, I no. don't. <laughs> Funnily <laughs> enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because I'm sure this will come up again later. Oh, yeah. you do. True, true. <clears throat> um, well, I'll go next then. All right. Uh, my number five is actually Florian Fortescue's ice cream parlor. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've I've agonised over this. And I ended up having to cut myself out lots of pieces of paper and switch them back and forth to get my list. So I ended up with Florian Fortescue's at number five. Now, the reason I've, I've chosen this is it's got a great selection of really good ice creams. It really has. The smooth and yeah. the, the, they don't have a grainy texture, which can happen quite a lot with theme park ice creams. Yeah. Um, it has amazing decor and the uniforms are absolutely spectacular. Yeah, it's a very wizarding world. You know, I, I, I love it in there. I could spend ages just looking at the tile work and, and what have you. I just mm. chose this because it's got a great atmosphere and it's got really great ice cream. And I don't think for a theme park the prices are actually that bad. No. And when no. you go for the souvenir cup full of butterbeer ice cream, <laughs> my goodness, you get a lot of ice cream. Uh, yes. <laughs> So here's a, another little, uh, uh, I guess, tip. I don't know if this is well known, but when you get your ice cream over there, you can actually have them give you two different flavors and they'll separate it for you. Because oh. it comes with two oh, scoops, yeah. but they're giant scoops. And uh, so if you're like on the fence, you want to try two flavors, just tell them which two you want and you can even separate it. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Excellent. Little, little UOP pro tip. So a normal cup is two scoops, but you can get two different flavors is what you're saying? Yes. yes. Awesome. That's a really good tip. That's actually get some interesting <clears throat> combinations in there as well. We possibly could have mm-hmm. tried all of them. Yeah. Had we we should, that? that yeah. Now. Oh, bugger. <laughs> Next Cloud time. Cloud cream chocolate chili is a great mix for that. Ooh. Because then you got like, the chocolate chili to burn you and then the uh, clotted cream to, to cool, cool it down. It down yeah. That chocolate chili ice cream is actually really it was good. Because you said you're not a fan I of chocolate, like chocolate ice, cream, ice cream and that stuff was really nice. It was very smooth. But one, mm. one mouthful was enough. I think if you go back, if you go back and listen to to our episode that recorded over that week when we tried them all, and we tried, we got four di- mm. flavors and we tried between the four of us. And Jade was like, she didn't want to try the chili, and then she was like, okay, I'll try a little bit. And she was like, oh, that's nice. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want any more now. <laughs> I have seen several people punk their kids with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some there. chocolate Free. ice cream, sunshine. Oh, lovely. <laughs> kids go go at it like they do. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, the facade's awesome as well, actually. Yes. Yeah. It's lovely. Yep. Yeah. So, so, Darren, what's your number five? My number five is probably going to be surprising to people, and I don't think it's going to be on anybody's list. Ooh. It's Richter Burger. Oh. Ah. Interesting. Which I think is soon to go away to become like Dom's Garage. Probably. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit gutted yeah. we're not going to get to top ourselves at the fix bar. Well. <laughs> yeah, that, and that's one thing. That is one thing that puts it high on the list there, mm-hmm. is the uh, unlimited salad bar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah. it. Um, but no, I just never had a bad experience there. And I have a lot of good memories going there when I was a kid. It's one of the places I, I definitely remember going on my first trip mm-hmm. and um it, it's just uh it's a decent quick service and yeah like i said you get that salad bar you can make your money go a long way mm-hmm. <laughs> it's funny isn't it because those toppings bars are they're very disney everyone talks about them mm-hmm. at disney and stuff and they've slowly sort of taken them away a little bit and it's it's interesting that there is still one in the park yeah it's one of those places that i've wanted to always aim to eat at but we've, it's yeah. never been the right time right place or anything like that we've so never never even stepped foot in the place i've always heard good things about it oh yeah and the so, theming in the in the place is really neat yeah. too because yeah yeah they've got it's all th- themed around the san francisco earthquakes so they've got uh like the statue upside down as soon as you walk in and then they've just got a lot of stuff on the walls about that and i believe there's a doc brown reference in the back so all right yeah I'm going to go ahead and check that out. Don't they have like a signature burger as well that's called the big one? Is that yeah. right? I think so, I do yeah. believe so. Yeah. Because yeah. yes. they've got the huge speaker in the floor, haven't they? For the rumble. Yeah. Yeah. When the earthquake hits, as it does regularly. Yeah, do. yeah not anymore. Yeah. So. Huh. yeah, they don't do it as much as they do. No. <laughs> I have to go back in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So Lee. Me is it. Um, This was going to be one one of two and I wasn't sure which and I'm still not sure I've necessarily got these the right way around. (laughs) But I've put the three broomsticks in at number five. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> the food's all right. It's not great. You can get the pretty much the same food round the corner at Thunder Falls Terrace. I do like yeah. the theming in there. I love one of the biggest things that makes the Three Broomsticks a really good place, especially if you're a Potter fan of those projections up in the rafters mm-hmm. that make it look like the stuff going on that it is an actual place that that things are happening yeah. in. It's inhabited. Yeah. Um, but it it's not quite above the other one that it could have been, and I'm, we'll get to that later on. But, um, I like yeah. it. The food's okay. Um, I like the hog's head, because I do class the hog's head as part yeah. of it, even though it's kind of not. Yeah. Um, That's the place to go get butterbeer for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, without a doubt. And the hog on the wall is cool. But I just, I don't know. It, I would have liked something more from it. It doesn't, I don't know. It just, it's missing something that, that would elevate it to a really high class wizarding world food place. It's just. It's missing to me, I think, like the thing that that would put it over is like when you watch those movies and you see like a tavern or a place like that, you know, and like a a movie like that, it's always like more bustling. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you've got like the the servers running around with things and, you know, like that. And it it would be hard to capture that on a day to day basis in the theme parks like, like they do in there, but it just has this kind of like warmth that is not present, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. It's, a, it's a very dark, cool place, you know, to, to hang out. And it just doesn't have that same kind of like, I don't know, um, like that, that coziness. Yeah. I the think big, that it's that big roaring fire that would be on if it was in the wizarding world. Mm. Yeah. You're right. Darren. Yeah. But also you don't want that in the no. middle of the summer. So. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I, well, they could simulate that, you know, they're pretty good at that kind of thing. So. Just a piece of glass and projection. True, yeah. 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 They could do a, a good job and, and, you know, make the lighting in the, the rooms flicker and things like mm-hmm. that. And you, you, you can do a lot for that. And then the music in the background, you could yeah. definitely have some nice, lively music there that would spice that up a bit. But I do like the atmosphere. And I like how it, it does seem like it's a, a small place, even though it's not, there's a lot of seating in there and everything, but it just c- keeps this feeling of being small. I think yeah. with the low ceilings and everything. So yeah. I like the outdoor patio as well. Mm-hmm. If you can get out on there when there's no one else out on there, it's great. Yes. Yeah. Good place Apparently too. that's also one of the spots to see the, uh, light show in the castle. Cool. Oh yeah. Chris is all yeah. with, with all the pro tips tonight. Oh isn't yes. He? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's number five done. Interesting. No crossovers as of yet. No. So let's mm-hmm. move on to number four. Chris, what do you have for number four for us? As of yet. So Three Broomsticks is my number four. Ah, yes. <laughs> so, I mean, this is the same thing you guys said. Um, theming's good. It, it could be a little better. Um, I don't think they're too worried about it, though. Just, quick, you know, if you go there and, and see the line... It's always packed. Yes. Um, so I, I think I think they're happy with where they're at with mm-hmm. it. But I agree. I mean, I would love to see a little bit better theming elements in there. Yeah. And um, we just we love going there, and their potatoes are amazing. I know it sounds weird, <laughs> but they make like these home fry potato things, and it's just delicious. And we yes. eat that every time we go there. It is. It's difficult yeah. to put your finger on what you would want to 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 bring it up a level. But it just it it is missing uh, something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It also you you know I don't I don't know if it's just my memory that that it could be wrong, but it also reminded me of the old restaurant that was there prior that the giant tree. Oh, um, the enchanted. The, 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 oh, yeah. I see it. Enchanted oh. Tavern, yeah. 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 I don't yeah. know. I just I kind of have this reference going back to there, so maybe that nostalgia as well is it's kind of there. Yeah, probably. So. Yeah, definitely. When you get into that, any kind of like fantasy tavern like that, they yeah. got a very similar look to it. Yeah. So. Mm. It is good that I think it's the only place that I can think of in <clears throat> Ireland that you can get a, a sit down breakfast as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
and they have that 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 giant feast as well, right? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's one thing that I think both of those parks we've talked about a lot that getting breakfast inside the parks is difficult. There aren't a lot of places. No. Very true. Well, this is one of them. Yeah. yeah. It's my number four as well. Mm. Um. <laughs> yeah, and I've uh, uh, we've already had breakfast there, haven't we? Yes. A few times. And so butter beer and stuff, times. but we've never twice. Yeah, but twice. Now, you know I'm a fussy eater. I always say I'm not, but I am quite fussy. But that's mainly because of things that I, I don't eat. Not, you know, because I'm almost fully vegetarian. Don't roll your eyes. I didn't before. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> for me, I thought it was a really good breakfast. You know, and there's a good selection of breakfasts as well. You know, so, yes, I think the theme is amazing. Yes, it could have a few extra bits to it. I think I think you're right about needing a few more people in to give it that bustling. It does. It doesn't feeling. quite have that mm -hmm. tavern feel that it. But then again, if you've got the right time of day, it'll be bustling. Yeah, but it's not the same, is it? It's like Darren said. It's missing that sort of warmth, which it's just that you can't you can't really force that. It's no, you there can't. Or it isn't. You can't. Yeah. Um, I actually think for a theme park, the prices are actually all right. Yeah, they're not bad. You know. And, and, yeah. and you get a decent amount of food as well. And you can get butter, be butter beer for breakfast. You do when you're an eight... Oh, well, actually, at the time, he was, what? 2013, he'll have been 13, and he, with the empty legs, and he just finished everyone else's food off. Yeah, and butter <laughs> beers. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I can't really add much more to it. No. So. Right, Darren, number four. My number four is the Leaky Cauldron. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to start everybody going around on this one. Uh, yeah, the uh, uh, Leaky Cauldron is my favorite place to go try something and then send a picture over to Lee and Tracy and go, hey, look, I tried this British thing. And then they <laughs> <Yeah>. reply back. <laughs> that's, not, that's not it. That's not Toad in the Hole. That's not this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a scotch egg. That's no. not. <laughs> I think, didn't, when you made the Toad in the Hole, didn't I actually make it? Just so I could show you what it should look like. Yes. yes <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, but it's a uh, it's a great place to experiment and try at least halfway, yeah. <laughs> halfway British. Oh, items. yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, um, and it, it's I, I like it because the menu is definitely very different than everywhere else in the park. Uh, you get to try some really unique things there, um, and Scotch egg just happens to be my favorite thing at Universal. So. I, mm -hmm. I usually will run in there and grab one. Yeah. Uh, so, um, but yeah, and the seating and everything like that is okay. Yeah. Uh, I prefer when they put me in one of the little alcoves off to the side. Um, that like center dining table business is weird. Um, and then the other seating is a little too close to each other. So mm -hmm. like if you're on the bench, like you're sitting like next to a stranger that you don't mm -hmm. know <laughs> eating, eating food. So, which is not not a huge deal, but every once in a while, you just want your own space, and yeah. that's weird. Yeah. So. But yeah, but twice. for the most part, it's for the menu. I would say. We've only mm. eaten there once, haven't we? I want to say twice. I thought I we'd had. Oh no, we went for breakfast, and they weren't serving breakfast, so we went back for lunch the next day. So we've mm. eaten there once, and we were in one of the alcoves, like Darren said, yeah. there, right up against the window, actually. And it rained. Yeah. Yes, I remember it rained. Yeah, we've never even eaten there. Really? Out sometime. Yeah. yeah. Chris. Uh, I know. I know. It's yeah. I'm not gonna say nice. too much. It, we'll we'll get there. I was gonna say it's got that it, mm -hmm. it's got that cozy feel or that I think we're looking for with the yes. three bro yes, three it broomsticks. I think it does a little bit, yeah. And how they seat you and everything I think is a part of that. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you know, you get your candle you like your candlestick yes. from the yeah. from the uh, person that you give your order to, and then you hand it to somebody else that walks you to your table and then they bring your food out with that and it's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it feels more like the leaky cauldron. Whereas the three broomsticks doesn't feel like the th three broomsticks from the film or the books. The leaky cauldron feels like the leaky cauldron from the films and the books. But don't yeah. forget, I think that the three broomsticks is a bit of a learning curve. Anyway, oh, it was without the first a doubt, one. yeah. So and they honed it for the leaky cauldron. And kind of what what Chris kind of alluded to is, it, I think it it is kind of a holdover from the Enchanted Orc. Mm-hmm. Rather yeah. than Leaky Cauldron yeah. was built from the ground up. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your number four, dear? My number four is the Croissant Moon Bakery. Ah. Mm. 
The first time we did this in 2009 when we went to the park and it was freezing. Yes. And I'd heard loads of good things about it and it was somewhere I was desperate to try and it was crap. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went back for breakfast. Mm-hmm. We were looking for something to eat when we were there in... Was it? It was last time, It was wasn't last it? time, yes. Um... And we just went in, we got... I was rather surprised when you suggested it. A drink each, and then just a selection of pastries to share between the four of us. Such a healthy breakfast. Yeah. Look, we had Cinnabon the day before. Hang on, we did actually get uh, <laughs> yeah, an a oatmeal though. cookie as part of it, so we that's did. fairly yeah. healthy. Fairly. Yeah, um, well, it's just a really... It fits into that part of entry it does. thing really well. Yeah. Yeah. You got that cool tiled Mediterranean feel with yep. the the wrought iron tables and chairs and I'm trying to think can you do they have outside yes. seating they do yes. see I can't yeah. one of these days when we go all I want to do is go in there grab a drink grab something to eat and just sit and watch the world go by in part of entry I think it would be stunning I seem to remember we sat inside this time because the AC was on and it was already a very humid day it was hot yeah. last time mm. we were over, but I, I I really like it. It's somewhere if I was just looking for a quick snack to tide us over mm-hmm. for, like, say, if we had a restaurant booked in City Walk for later on that night, and we'd had our lunch, and we were just looking for something around sort of four or five o'clock, just as a snack over, I would go to the Croissant Moon mm-hmm. Bakery. I just I think it is it's exactly what a part of entry eatery should yes. be. Yeah. Yeah. I was excited to try a uh, crow nut, you know, after that became like a really popular, yeah. famous thing. We had one. So, so I went there. Yeah. I went to the Crescent Moon Bakery because I heard they were doing that. So, um, uh, they, they had a nice crow nut and they put it on a plate and everything. And then before handing it to me, she turned around and went to this icing vat and just dunked the whole entire oh thing God. into this icing vat and then, and slapped it on the, uh, on the, on the plate there and it was uh, a, a little bit of an overkill as far as <laughs> yeah. that went because I just wanted to try the Krona, you know, as it was, but, uh, so next time Krona, no it, I guess. yeah, I got to like, yell out, Hey, no, no, don't go to the icing vat. Please. Yeah. It's a bon approach. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. We have done the oh. Cinnabon thing last time and two children, <sighs> big cinnamon buns, I ended up eating more than one. I don't know how you managed it. They are wow. huge. <laughs> Believe it or not, Cinnabon is not in my top five. And cinnamon rolls are one of those things I can just eat. Like yeah. I can just keep eating them and they and yep. they don't I don't know where they go. It's weird. They're so good. Yeah. yeah. Especially if they've got pecans in them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I'll tell you that I found a recipe that's supposed to be identical to Cinnabon rolls. Mm. So Take some bread, oh, do you? Hunter R.I.P. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still need that sound bite <laughs> as a as a thing on here so I can just I know. Yes. Sure you can pull that. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm trying to remember which episode it was from. <laughs> I think it might have been our walk the walk of part of entry, actually. Wow, that's a while ago. It. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. We're at the the middle now. Number three. Chris, what do you have for me? So number three is Florian Fortescue's as well. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, again, you guys talked about it. Uh, it's, it's a great ice cream spot. Mm-hmm. Salted caramel blondie is, is amazing. Um, yeah. Two different flavors. One ice cream. There's not a lot you can <laughs> say, is there really? It just, it is. So good. And the butter beer as well. Even their soft serve is great. Yeah. Yeah. I love uh, the butter to beer. To be honest, that one's actually, out, out of everything I tried there, the butter beer was my favorite, which I had a, another time it seems to split people though because you get people who I, I don't know whether sometimes it tends to be the mix is a little different mm. that you get people go I couldn't really taste the butterbeer taste in it and then other times like I, I never found that and I, no. I think we tried it at least twice it was just like a real nice butterscotchy mm-hmm. oh, just a so, amazing mm. so I have, I have a little funny story if you want to hear about yeah. Florian Fortescue's right yeah. so it's the first time I think it was the first time we went we go to order the butterbeer ice cream and, you know, they have toppings. Uh, apparently, you can't put toppings on butterbeer ice cream, right? You could <laughs> only put them on the other ice creams because butterbeer ice cream just comes that way. It's obviously got some sort so, of repelling spell on it. <laughs> it has to be, right? <laughs> so 
this lady was very strict about it, right? We, we asked her, like, hey, can we get some uh, waffle cone pieces on top of the butterbeer? She's like, no, it's not allowed. We cannot do that. It has to be by itself. Interesting. So then we quickly just said, okay, can I have a side of waffle cone? <laughs> yeah, that's like, what sure. I was doing. Give it to us. And as she's charging, she realized why we did it. I don't know why she didn't the first time. <laughs> she got a little mad about that. It was it was pretty funny. <laughs> what happened? The customers very always seriously. right. It's obviously yeah. it it comes it must come down from JK a little bit that she wants oh. people to enjoy butterbeer ice cream as it yes. is. Because yeah, it she is. she said something about it being a signature ice cream and yeah. that's the way it comes kind of thing. So it has to be one of those JK things. Yeah. It's the same as like really? the amount of times we've been and and got um, a regular butter beer, and you're told not to put a straw in it. We were told by the servers yeah. a few times not to put a straw in it because it will yeah. fizz up and overflow. So Raymond, of course, being a 13 year old kid, gets a straw and went right. Let's try this. Nothing happened. Mm, it's probably because it's meant to be drank out of the yeah. out of the mug, so you get the mustache. Yeah, because that, that's how that's it's described in the before. books. Yeah. So let's give people a scientific reason why you shouldn't do it. Because people Yeah, but don't people like to... won't know. You, people are going to try it. It would make me try it more. Oh, oh. Always one. <laughs> it's been too long. I need a butterbeer again. Oh, Darren. It's been longer for juice. us, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, it might not have been. You might have had one. <laughs> did you not have any when you went to Horror Nights? No. So when was the last time you went to the park, Darren, that was a non-Horror Nights day? I don't know. <laughs> right before Horror Nights. Yeah. But, uh, but that, before that, it was I don't know how long. We took a little break this year, I'll say. Yeah, yeah it was two. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> For different reasons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and this year, thank, thank God for Mardi Gras, or else we might have been doing it again, so... So that's going to get us back out there. Yeah. So excellent, good, good. Yeah. All right, my number three is Mythos. Okay, what stops it getting to number two, Tracy? The refills are terrible. I am trying to get past that, and everybody keeps reminding me of it. You keep reminding everybody I have, of it. Do you know what? I have not brought it up this time. Darren did. He did. Wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so, legend that though that story. I know. It is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, obviously, the decor, the way it's, it's set up is absolutely stunning. You know, inside mm -hmm. and out. It's beautiful. It's got a great yep. menu with delicious food. Um, it is pricey. But I, I think for us that only go once in a blue moon, it's worth it because it's actually, it's a destination restaurant rather oh, than yeah. just a, a you got to eat there every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, of course, there's the butter pat. They're the coolest yes. thing ever. I love them so much. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It is really it's, good there. It's such a nerdy little thing. Uh -huh. it's just, souvenir you can't bring home. Yeah. I it's, know. It's such a, it, it show, that's when you know you're a universal fan, when you start nerding out over the, the butter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that is so cool. I need yes. to freeze it and take it home. We do have a photograph, yeah. I believe. Oh, somewhere. Yeah, butter. I will have done. <laughs> yeah. And also, the bathroom. My, my number three is Mythos as well. So. Right. Awesome. Yeah, for for most mostly the same reasons, and I gotta say too, like as far as I was surprised because I thought it was going to be very cost prohibitive yeah. going to that place. Mm -hmm. um, but going there um, and just getting like a sandwich, maybe like the pasta dishes and that kind of thing. And I think they don't do they have like a steak option there, like at yeah, least medallions so. or something yeah. like that. That so, was a yeah, little higher. Yeah. Um, you know, like those kind of things are a little higher. But like if you go for a sandwich and something like that, mm -hmm. like. It, it's surprisingly just a couple of dollars more than you'd pay at Richter Burger. Yeah. yeah, I remember having that conversation, Darren, that when we got it all booked, we went that you you were quite surprised mm -hmm. at how not as expensive as you thought it was going to be. The yeah. flatbread's amazing, and that would feed one person comfortably, and that wasn't very expensive. No. Yeah, um, so you might you you might want to take a look. You can get, yeah. you'd be surprised if you if you pick your menu items right. Um, you yeah. can get a really good substantial meal for pretty cheap there, yeah. especially if you've got an AP. I was that's what I was just going to say. Yeah. Yeah, you get the added benefit of sitting down, getting out of the sun, in a really nice environment. So. Yeah. 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 Cool, Lee. You look sheepish. Uh, my number three is the leaky cauldron. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty mm -hmm. much for everything, Darren said it better than I could have done. Right. 
<laughs> I agree completely with everything you said. It's just the, the one thing it lacks is I would have loved, and I think we said it when we were there, I would have loved them to have done what they did in, in the three broomsticks with those projection things to make mm-hmm. it look like there is other things going on upstairs. Because at the end of the day, the Leaky Cauldron is the restaurant underneath the hotel. Yes. Yeah. So there should be people staying in those rooms above mm-hmm. it. So I think they, they could add that extra in. Little sound bites, little knock and housekeeping yeah. and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> Doors but opening and closing. and The, de- the food was really good. Mm-hmm. The food was really good. Um, I, had, I think I had the ploughman's. Yes. And for a daft salad that I'm not usually into, I really enjoyed yeah. it. Um, Jade said she got the she got the little mini pie selection. Yes. She was like, Fish cottage pie, pie and fish pie, pie whatever yeah. and she really enjoyed that and Raymond got the fish and chips he said it was excellent mm-hmm. you got the um the stew i think it was in the in the bread bowl yeah and you said it was all right to a point but some of it was gristle but overall well yeah and also they put a lot of celery in it which yeah. i cannot stand celery filler yeah <laughs> yeah it's vile but i think what from our only experience the thing that elevated it a little bit for me it was it was pouring down outside mm-hmm. And it it just gave it, it did really add to the atmosphere, looking out the window Mm -hmm. with it dark outside and raining Mm -hmm. and the the rain streaming down the window. Um, It really did add to the atmosphere, Mm -hmm. but I think it just has a little something extra that the three broomsticks doesn't have. And again, I can't necessarily put my finger on it. I think I'll go a little bit with what Darren said. I think the seating definitely makes a difference to the overall feel of it. I think it feels a little higgledy-piggledy in the three broomsticks where it's quite laid out. And if you get in those little alcovey bits, mm-hmm. it is quite cool that you're still kind of next to other people's tables, but you're kind of Far away from away, yeah. everything else. Um, it yeah. is quite a loud restaurant. I think I remember a baby screaming its head off at one point. Because if you look at it, it actually does taper in. Yeah. It's very tall, it tapers in. And there's a lot of, there's not a lot of soft furnishings to absorb no, the sound. No, it is very, it's all stone yeah. walls, stone floors and wood And tables. portraits. Yes. It's all wood and, um, yeah. But it it definitely feels, it feels much more like the restaurant from the films and the books than than the Three mm-hmm. Broomsticks does. And I think it's just as an overall Harry Potter restaurant, it, it's nigh on exactly what I would mm-hmm. want from it. it. It immerses you in that world. Yeah. They do um, actually keep a really good pint. Okay. Um, I know, I mean, I had the dragon scale. It was a bit too bitter for me, a bit too hoppy. But it was well poured and it was chilled perfectly. So, <laughs> The only thing is, know. a team member talked me out of, I wanted to try fishy green ale. So when we went to the front and nodded, can I have a fishy green ale, please? And he went, really? I was like, yeah, I want to try it. And he's like, honestly, I wouldn't. I was like, you should have ordered it and something try. else. Uh, oh, all right, then I won't bother. And I think I had a, a butter beer. In you, the did, you had a tongue tie and lemon squash. Oh, I didn't. It was lovely. Yes. Crikey, yeah. I remembered something. Yeah, it was really nice, actually, that. It was quite tough. I like it? that, unlike the three broomsticks, it's got a lot more signature stuff. I know a lot of it's the drinks, mm-hmm. but it's got more signature things there than the three broomsticks has. Yeah. Um, the much more diverse food selection. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. So mm-hmm. like, oh, that's my number three. Okay, the okay. Okay. Oh, it's got to go up my list higher now. <laughs> <laughs> right. We shall have a little break while we digest what we've just shared. <sighs> so hungry now. <laughs> so it's over to Mouse and Muggle. Doesn't listening to the crew at UUOP every week make you wish that you were actually at Universal Orlando Resort? Well... Stop wishing and start doing. Mouse and Muggle Travel Company is the perfect place to begin. Their team of concierge level travel planners will help you every step of the way. And for you muggles who also love the mouse, their team of experts specialize in Disney destinations too. And the best part of all, their services are free to you. So, if you're ready to plan your next Disney or Universal vacation, let Mouse and Muggle Travel Company do all the work for you. Just go to mouseandmuggle.com and fill out a no-obligation quote request. Or send an email to info at mouseandmuggle.com. And remember, whether you're a mouse or a muggle, 
Mouse and Muggle Travel Company can help make your next vacation simply magical. Right, welcome back. We hope we've whet your appetite for some more. What? Don't roll your eyes at me, young man. We are now into our top two. Mm-hmm. Chris is the one I'm trying to figure out. Because Chris is the wild card. I think we, the three of us, know each other relatively well. Mm-hmm. We could probably take a, a, a guess at what each other's got. Chris is the wild card. Yeah. And my, and my number two, I guarantee you, it's on none of your lists. Oh. oh. Well, in that case, you better tell us what it is, Chris. <laughs> All right. So my number two fits within the constraints of uh, what we're doing okay. here. But it's over at Volcano Bay. Uh, White, oh. Waka YY Eats. And... Um, it's one of their, I think, bigger food service areas they have over there. Um, we had food there. We had some flatbreads, and they were really, really good. I've heard uh, good things about the flatbreads. He's bending the, the rules island. already. I know. I <laughs> like Semi. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the food's good. Over, you know, it's really good over there. They don't really have that many. You know, big. Uh, you know, quick service stations at uh, Volcano Bay. I think it's like two main ones, mm-hmm. right? And this mm-hmm. is one of them. Um, but it was good. Uh, I would I would highly recommend it. Yeah, I think the, the big issue Excellent. was that they started it off with a lot of great stuff and then paired it all back a lot. Yes, yes. This, these are one of those, uh, like the flatbread pizzas are one that they did keep around the entire time, but yeah. they did drop some other items from there. I'm glad they kept some something that I would eat. Because most of the stuff <laughs> that they got rid of, I was going, oh. I know, it was such a shame. Because oh. it was the one thing they marketed more than anything else was the food. Yeah. Yeah. That's Obviously, just bitten going, off yeah. more than they could chew. Pardon the pun. And then two months in, it's like all oh, that food we told you that looked amazing when we f- before we opened. Well, we've taken it all. I get it. Tooken. Did I just say tooken? Oh my away. goodness! That's the new <laughs> podcast slogan. We're throwing it all in the wave pool. Yeah. <laughs> Grab it while you can. <laughs> mm. I'm still waiting for that nice sit-down restaurant over there. Yeah, they, they should do that. And all you can eat sashimi in the wave pool night. <laughs> you have to Ouch. catch it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you it in. Yeah. in the rapids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they chuck it. They chuck all the fish in the uh, the just the wild a, river. Just give you a fishing rod, <laughs> and off you go. <laughs> you might find some chocolate sashimi over there. Oh. <laughs> Take a pack lunch then. <laughs> 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 La 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 la. Moving on. See, he's fitting it already. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I see how it is. <laughs> My <laughs> number two. Number two, you see? There you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> Muse yourself there, didn't I you? I did, yeah. <laughs> My number two has not been mentioned yet. But I wouldn't be surprised if it was somebody else, if it, it's on somebody else's list. Darren. Oh, mm. why would it be on Darren's list and not mine? Um, because you haven't eaten there. Bumblebee man's I taco truck. Have you have there. eaten there. You I snuck ate there in. last time we went because me and Hunter went over to it while you were inside. I've mm. never been inside. I'm a good girl. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, me and Hunter went over. I wasn't yes. hungry at all. So, but I got. I can't remember what I got. Uh, Bumblebee man's taco truck is number two. Didn't make my list. It would have been it number didn't. six, though. It really would have. Yeah. They got some um, good nachos there. Mm-hmm. I had the chicken taco, although I would like to try the fish. I can't remember what I had. I think I Probably. had the carne asada, maybe. Yeah. Um, it's it's a fun kiosk, let's face it. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, a, yeah. it's really good fun. The tacos are really good. You know, I mean, we don't... Tacos aren't a huge thing over here. No. You have to make them yourself. Especially not on a Tuesday. Um, no, it should be. Um, just overall, it was just a really good experience. It's surprisingly filling for the size of it. And then what, about $13 each, $12, $13 each? And I actually thought it was really good value because they were packed full of filling, Yeah. which, you know, was a surprise. But it, it's not on my list because I say I've only eaten there once and I wasn't mm-hmm. particularly hungry, so it was just a case of sticking something down my neck. But it is, it's, it's such a really great, well-themed sort of place to eat it, it fits in with the simpsons so well yeah it's something different that you can't get as a as a like a just a daft snack around the park like you couldn't go anywhere else in either of those parks and get a taco as just a daft right. thing i can't think of a, a 
another theme park in that area that you can get tacos from. Yeah. The other thing is the tacos that they make there are pretty authentic. It's surprisingly authentic for, you know, like for your, your basic standard. That's like what a real talk, like a street taco in Mexico is. Okay. It's the tortilla. It's, it's your yeah. basic meat. It's, uh, you know, a little bit of salsa or, you know, something like that on top, uh, a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, chopped up onions and that's it. You know, it's not, it's not made up like Taco Bell tacos and things yeah. like that. There's no hard shells, nothing like that. Yeah. yeah. See, that's what Doritos aren't the this, shell. Yes. Yeah, right. See, that's when, when someone says taco to me, that's what it's I imagine hard. a hard shell taco. Yeah. Yeah. No. And these, these are more like more close to the real deal. So yeah. it's, it's you, impressive that you see that universal, like the, to have a little bit yeah. of authenticity. You get, you, get a, you get a choice of wrap as well, don't you? Of tortilla, corn or, yeah. or flour. All right. Yeah, because yes. it, it was Darren, I wasn't going to go, and it was because Darren was going for one. I was like, do you know what? I'm mm-hmm. going to try one. Yeah. So, and Garen, Garen? Garen. Mm. <laughs> Darren guided me through the process. Yep. And it was it was worth it. It's, it's one of those places that when we go back, I am eating there again because I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> want to go and and do it properly like i say it was just a case of i needed something to eat and yeah it's, was that if i remember food. rightly when i went when we went there last time it was it was before the meat wasn't it just before the meat over at men in black because uh, maybe yeah it was yeah. darren and nina and hunter and kim and me and you mm-hmm. and and the kids i think and... i just went to the duff brewery <laughs> no i think you went <laughs> inside I, I, I think we uh, we you were actually sat in rumor. moore's no that was our f- that was the first meetup no oh, no 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 it was the meetup. last one well, yeah, we've had a few me and meals Hunter in went there. to there, and you lot went inside into Moors. Yeah, that's right. That's when you guys did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good to you. Cool. Um, Darren. Lost that. It was me. Yes, Darren. It's because you <laughs> took over there. Darren, what's your number two? Uh, my number two is my Halloween horror night staple, and that is Finnegan. Uh, ah. yes. Hmm, nice. Do dig Finnegan's. So that's not my other my other place where I can get a Scotch egg. Uh, <laughs> so I'm all for that. Uh, they also have this crazy appetizer. It's like a it's called a potato web. Okay. Oh yes, I've seen. Uh, and it's this greasy mess of yeah, you know, like shoestring potatoes mm-hmm. all fried together. It's pretty Looks amazing. So good. It's kind of like yes. a potato <laughs> funnel cake. Yes. I imagine um, it to so. be like the Finnegan's equivalent of the blooming onion. I still need yeah, one of pretty those. much. It is very much like that. You you understand then, the connection? What's that? Irish potatoes. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. just making sure. Definitely. Um, and then uh, you know, they've got some pretty decent Irish food similes, <laughs> I'd say, like you know, like bangers and mash and stuff like that that are that are pretty decent there too. Um, but yeah, mainly and it's when I go in there I just think of, you know, it's uh, Horror Nights, it's the Stay and Scream location that yep. I like to go to the most. Uh, like, get, going there early, getting the table and hanging out, you mm-hmm. know, through the Stay and Scream as long as, at the table as long as you can, and then, you know, hanging out in the bar and outside right before it opens. It's it's a great spot. It's got everything you need. Um, and then later on in the night, it's my favorite place to go back into to get a drink as well, because the bar there is awesome. The The bartenders are all really friendly, and they, they'll remember you throughout the night. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, uh, it got a little crazier this year, being that it was one of the few places where you could actually get liquor right. uh, during Horror Night. Yes. So uh, it, they actually had like a stanchion line going through it and everything in the bar area, which made it a much different atmosphere yeah. than normally. But it was, but it still ended up being pretty decent, and they found a way to get through everybody through fast. So excellent. Uh, the live music there is also usually pretty good too. Cool. I usually just have like a, a guitar playing like you know either in Irish music and other like sing along kind of songs so yeah yeah we've been in place. we got a table and no one was hungry so we got kicked out <laughs> oh. <laughs> I could have eaten but I could always eat and then we nearly didn't pay for our drinks which come and chased us down oh boy because the girl that served us like when are you, are you ready to I'm like oh we're still having a look because we we couldn't decide and then some would come along are you actually going to eat and like another servant went probably not and she went well i need to, we need the table for someone else so booted us outside and then the other girl <laughs> we'd already ordered drinks come we're like we're gonna get away from not paying for our drinks <laughs> no, and then she come running out there's the bill oh bugger She's quite rude about it actually <laughs> she was actually quite considered they'd actually physically ejected us yeah she was giving you that irish hospitality <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean it's Stuart. No. 
Um, Lee? Well, we're on number two. Two. My number two has been mentioned, I think, by everyone at this point. Okay, then. <laughs> and it is Mythos. <laughs> I think Mythos is universal signature restaurant for me. And like yes. Darren said, it's, it's not as expensive as you think. Mm-hmm. I would go as far as to say for a signature restaurant, it's cheap. Yeah, I, don't think, think, I mean it's pricey, but it's expensive. for what it is, it's right. So to put it it's a lot in, cheaper than anywhere else, in anywhere than Epcot, that's for sure. Anywhere in that's Disney, that's very yeah. true. Yes. Put it this way, right? When we came over in 2013, we did a lot of dining at Disney World, and for four of us, I don't think we paid less than a hundred dollars. And we did Liberty Tree Tavern, we Which did was lovely. Um, the beer garden in Germany. We did. Um, Off Places. the top of my head, I can't, but we did quite a few. Uh, 50s prime time at, at Hollywood Studios, and we never paid. Oh, we did Restaurant Marrakesh at Epcot as yeah. well. So we never we never spent less than $100. We went to Mythos. There was six of us. Mm-hmm. With Me, an AP, mate. you, two kids, Darren and, and Eric. Eric. Darren, you had a beer, I do believe. Yeah, we were the two kids. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all right, we had Eric's annual pass discount at the time, which is 20%. But for the six of us, uh, I don't think there was... Did we get... Oh, you got you get the bread for starter anyway, don't you? That just comes complimentary. Yeah. So we all had a main course and a drink, and there was at least, at least one alcoholic drink in there. Mm-hmm. And it came to, I think it was $96 for the six of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so even with a discount, portions. that's still, I think, very good, especially for a signature restaurant. If you went to a Disney signature restaurant with six of you, even with 20% off, I think you'd still be looking at $150, $160 easily. easily. I was going to say 200 yeah. Yeah. Easily. Like, was Telly A or something like that? Well, we, yeah. let's say we went to Beer Garden and it cost us $150 for four of us at Beer Garden. I did not eat anywhere near enough. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't that impressive either. That, it wasn't that impressive. Um, The theming is... It's the best theming. I'm going to totally pimp this out and then everyone's going to go, why is this not your number one then if you're raving about it as much as you are? (laughs) Um, The theming is, from the outside, it's spot on to Lost Continent. From the inside, it's stunning. Mm -hmm. It really does feel like you've stepped into another world. Um, Like Chris said earlier, the views out across the lagoon of Mm -hmm. of Islands of Adventure, if if you're lucky enough to get a table over there, it's stunning. Um, The food's great. Um... The little butter pats yes. are amazing. That rosemary bread that you get as oh, just a complimentary divine. start is fantastic. Yeah. Um, so we've eaten there, what, three times now? Twice. Only twice? Yeah, only twice. Me Kids and you. have been there once? Yeah. Okay. I've eaten there with them alone. Um, I'm not no, convinced. we have only eaten there twice. Once me and you, and then once with Darren and Eric last time. I will put a million pound on it right now. You haven't got a million pound. I will put every penny we have in the bank on it right now. I'll guarantee you when it comes to stuff like this, I don't forget. Twice. Anyway. Um, what? No. I guarantee you. <laughs> Guaranteed twice. <laughs> so you say. Tell me another time we went then. I just... The kids the have feeling. only been there once. Right. Anyway. <laughs> um... Just everything about it, even just like the da- the bathrooms, the bathrooms. I'll put it this way: I was that sad. I was taking pictures of the bathrooms with my phone. Oh, of you weirdo! <laughs> I'm one of yeah, those weirdos. Mm. Um, it probably heard shutter sounds. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> some guy in the stalls hurrying up. <laughs> <laughs> the tangled bathrooms all over again. No, I'm just taking pictures of the bathroom. That's all. I've done that as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> it just it is stunning. For a signature, like I think it comes down, it is it is the perfect restaurant in Islands of Adventure to encompass what Islands of Adventure is in a restaurant. Mythos is it, and everyone has to try it, even if you think it's like oh, it's expensive because it's it's their signature restaurant. It isn't really. No. Oh, and that throwing up Snapchat filter works on the yes, out front, so yes, that's <laughs> brilliant. And the menu, the prices are, are available yeah. online, so you can go and you can budget. So if you're planning months out, you can save and it is worth it. I also seem to remember the first time we had Seth on to talk about his unofficial guide to Universal Orlando, him saying 
then it is one of those restaurants that you can book a table there even if you don't have theme park admission. If you go to the yeah, front of the fun. park and tell them that you have booked, I don't know whether it still is, this was from a couple of years ago, but I know at the time, you could, because yeah, I think you can book it on, is it open table? I think so. Yeah, yeah you can book it on there. After 4 p.m.? No, I don't think so. Uh, tell them at the front, they will walk you to it. Have your meal, and then they're supposed to walk you out, whether they do or not, to different matter. Mm-hmm. But you can actually go in, even if you haven't got a theme park ticket, or at <laughs> least you could a couple of years ago. Whether that's still true mm-hmm. or not, I'll have to check with Seth. Actually. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just got to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a long week. Oh, well, I've rode Forbidden <laughs> Journey, and I've just been through Poseidon's Fury while I was there. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. My thoughts is my my number two. Okie dokie. So we are at number one. I wouldn't be surprised. I think three of them are going to be the same. I think three of them are going to be the same. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But Chris is the wild card. Hmm. So Chris, what is your number one? All right. So my number one isn't necessarily the best place to eat in the park, but it is number one on my list because we try to go there at least once every time we go to the park. Um, it's over in Islands. It is Fire Eaters Grill. Oh, and, uh, oh. it's Lost Continent area, and we love the gyro gyro. <laughs> no, I mean, love the gyro over there. Oh, Darren, no. we... <laughs> controversial apparently. Yeah, the, we, the, we, you mean the spam? The fried spam <laughs> no, players. it's it's really good. It's really good. <laughs> we, we, get it, we get a gyro, and then we just walk over and uh, hang out by the fountain, just eat it there, and watch the fountain do its thing. Darren, did you just champion yeah. to get Chris on the show because he knew he had every opinion was different to yours, so you could just <laughs> lambast him? Oh, <laughs> no, it's just yeah. Nina and I went, and that's where she tried a euro for the first time, and it was not the best experience. <laughs> we'll say. Oh, no. Just because I'm used to I'm used to it being shaved off a you know a euro meat, you know, like being shaved off the slow cooker being cooked there, and this one kind of came out of a tray, and it was kind of like a square piece of meat. I don't know. Maybe it's a different thing. Thicker than normal, yes. I don't yeah. Know. So, Darren's, good for us. Yeah. Darren's a Euro snob. <laughs> yeah. And on top of that, the, the seagulls in that area are insane. <laughs> no, pigeons and seagulls. I think it's the pigeons that really run the area over there. <laughs> <laughs> they also got that $1,000 bonus. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I have never noticed pigeons oh, yeah. or seagulls over there, to be honest. I've noticed pigeons. Yeah. I think it's pigeons. They have ducks, too. A lot of ducks. It is somewhere I've always fancied trying because it does, again, it's that it fits in really uh, yes. well to Lost Continent. Um, I, would no, like so I have it. had other stuff there that was really good. It's just the Euros didn't, <laughs> didn't work Aww. out for us. But they did for Chris. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got, you've got that whole thing going on. You've got a little routine with it, a little tradition. Yeah, it's just yeah. a little tradition we do when we go there. So. Yeah. yeah. That definitely like that. has to enter um, into it, you know, nostalgia. nostalgia yeah. And, exactly, and of yeah. course it does. Uh, it 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 does everything to do with theme parks, uh, and ninety percent of it is yeah that nostalgia. Yeah, R- Richter Burgers serving the exact same yeah yeah dirty burgers they are everywhere else in the park. But <laughs> I like it for some reason, you yeah. know. So just one of those things. It's like I'll throw an honorable mention, and when we get to the end of it, and it's 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 crap, but it just it has a memory for me. Okay, yeah. I can't even place what that could be. Um, my number two is probably Lee's, and most likely, well, I know it's going to be I'm Lee's. not going to say it either and way. I'm, I'm expecting it to probably be Darren as well, but I might be surprised because I've already said this once and I was wrong. Um, <laughs> so mine is actually Fast Food Boulevard. Okay. Um, yep, let's talk about it. Mine too. Yeah, yeah. go on, it's mine as well. <laughs> yeah, no. <it's>, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to try and be all mysterious and try and play no, that it wasn't, but it is. Come on, you know I know you. Um, it's the only <laughs> one we talk about when we do talk about food. You know, it, it's one of those places inside, uh, inside and outside. It's great. It's just like stepping onto the set. Yeah, you know, stepping yep. into a cell. It's absolutely brilliant. Everybody can eat there. There is something for everybody, which is great. It makes it a family venue. Yeah. Um, there is a fantastic selection of stuff. There is for like you um, say for everyone, vegetarian, the full work. Yeah, we've tried. Uh, we've tried just about every station between us. I've had yeah. I've had the turkey wrap from Lisa's Treehouse, which Jade's was really the good, and the heat lamp <laughs> dog. We've had the burgers, we've had the chicken and waffles. You know, even we've been had down the rib to, witch. Yeah, we've... even down. I've even been down to the uh, little alcohol booth, 
and stop oh, some yeah. Germans from buying their underage son a drink. <laughs> Guess what little German I remembered? Really? Uh, yeah. They wanted to buy their 15-year-old son a beer. Oh, dear. And that could have been bad. And I managed to make out that they were going to buy it anyway and just give it to him. And so I just Oh, said, I remember that now. Yes, and I just said, <laughs> I didn't catch all of it. Nine. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, not nine beers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they refused to serve him. They refused to serve any of them because the suspicion was there they were going to really? give it to a minor. And it's fair yeah. enough because oh, yeah. the law is the law. Um, mm-hmm. So, yes, back on back on track. My favourite thing about this place is the fact that you cannot sit down until you have a tray of food and then you are seated. Yeah. So you are always guaranteed a seat because that's one of the most stressful things about eating in these places, like in... Um, Pinocchio's Village Pinocchio's House. Villa- Village House. By the time you finally do find a seat, your food's cold. Yeah, um, that's a good point. It is. It's an excellent know, it, thing. I know a lot of Disney, a few of the Disney places started doing that now and the three broomsticks do it as well. Yeah. And for having, having the kids as well, that really helps. Yeah. So you know, it does. And and we've had we've had many meals in there now, including <laughs> the Halloween Horror Nights, the RIP to a group meal. That's one of the best meals I've ever had. That's where I was gonna go, yeah. You know, and it's it's mm-hmm. there's fun elements. You can look around, there's T V screens, there's pictures on the walls, there's all sorts. It's just it's just an all encompassing, really great place. Well if you if you yeah. if you if you add mores into it, which mm-hmm. are class mores oh, as yeah. part of it as well, that is the bar from the TV show. Absolutely. You know, it's even got the love tester in the corner, which the kids have great fun getting me to do it. <coughs> what were you, wet fish? <laughs> Damp squib or whatever <laughs> yeah. the bottom one was. <laughs> the pool table Damn table. Card. Yeah. yeah. Pool table table is awesome. You know. But I think, like oh, you yeah. say, with that, that RIP too, when we went, you know, where else would you go with 11 of, the, uh, 11 of us and all have a really good selection of something that everybody would yeah. want. Yeah. I um, that's what's really good about it is what I was going to say is that, that selection. And, um, I, I don't know, like the crusty crusties is the, my favorite one out of all of them, uh, because it, it does have the ridiculous food, like the clogger burger and yeah. the, the heat lamp dog and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. You order that heat lamp dog. It's like, oh, a foot long hot dog. No, yeah, for real. <laughs> like a foot long after cooking. Yeah. This gigantic, ridiculous thing, you know, with all the stuff on it. And it's just, um, it, it's exactly like it is, you know, in the uh, in the show. It's yeah. exactly where you'd expect a Krusty Burger to be like. And, mm-hmm. you know, it comes out just that way. Um, the chicken place is also really good. The chicken and waffle sandwich. Oh, you and know, chicken thumbs. I crave I that <laughs> chicken and waffle sandwich so much that I yeah. even make it at home. Yeah, it's uh, I, it, I think that is like a, a signature. It's probably like the signature item at Universal Studios. Yeah, uh, that that I would recommend everybody mm-hmm. try, and you know, it just happens to be at a place where if you don't like that, there is a thousand other things. Yeah, the yeah. pizza is actually really decent as yes. well. Uh, there, so yeah, the only place I haven't tried is the the seafood place. So, oh no, 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 I... no we haven't either. Oh, hang on. No, I don't think we have. I'm trying to think what it's called. Fisherman, somewhat fisherman. Fisherman's feast or something. Like What's the fisherman called? What's it called? What's oh, it's the fry something. Oh, thing. the frying Dutchman. Frying Dutchman, yeah. Yeah. Do I seem to remember somebody having fish? No, I don't think we have. Maybe I've just looked at it. But there's like half a dozen signature drinks as well. The Mr. Teeny's really nice. Yeah, that the buzz... Schwarz, Schwarzwelder. Yes, and I remember Darren getting the buzz caller and not realising it was sugar free. Yeah. <laughs> Still good, um, I love that stuff. <laughs> But yeah, it's sometimes a, half the time it gives me a massive headache, but I feel right, yeah. like I don't know why. <laughs> it's for me because I am I class myself as more or less vegetarian because I don't eat processed meats. I don't like sausages and I don't like burgers as a rule. But I do like them. Oh, I she's just, a freak, I know. It's not. I've just had too many bad experiences with, with bits that should not be in there. So I just go, you know what? I'm not eating them. Yeah. But the Krusty Burger is one of the few meat burgers I will actually eat. Yeah, and that it's rib, really which is really good as quality. well, actually. It was very messy. Yeah. Very messy. And that's the thing. So I think it's like 90% of the stuff. When you talk about a theme park restaurant, I think 90% of the stuff on that menu is themed to The Simpsons. Yeah. Um, yeah, they do a good job with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think to top it off, you've taken a restaurant that, I'll be honest, 
we'd never set foot in. I don't know what either of you two would ever set foot in it when it was, what was it, the American... Well, I, can't, I don't was remember it the what was there. International, International, International Film, 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 film. Oh, yeah. Darren, yes. do you ever been One in time. there? Yeah, Once. when I was a kid, I remember going there like on our first trip. And it was, I don't think it was... Oh man, we have to try this place. It was, hey, we're hungry. Yeah. Look to yeah. the right, it's a restaurant. <laughs> we Chris, stuck our head in once and went, no. Chris, have you been in when it was I what honest, it was? I honestly don't even remember. I'm no. I'm pretty sure I have when I was a kid as well, but yeah. So they've no taken clue. a restaurant that no one gave two hoots about and made it somewhere that is a destination in that park. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, without a doubt. I love it, and it's the one place that when, whenever we, whenever I think about going back, it's like I can't wait to get back in there. Yeah, and the yeah. fact that if you're eating as a group, like I went out and I got tacos, yeah, and you can still bring in. it back in. Yeah, and I went and got. I don't know why I went out to get the beer rather than going to the bar. Weird. I don't know. Yeah. Again, anyway, great James Cream location as well. Yes. Definitely. You got dessert yeah. across the street at Lardland? Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Not that I'd know what that was like. Oh, behave yourself. <laughs> Different kind of dessert across the street at Duff. <laughs> <laughs> My kind of dessert. <laughs> yes. Good all round place. It is, absolutely. So, yeah. well, I think we've kind of done that, right? Honorable mentions then. Oh, Jesus. Hmm. Who's got well. what? Chris, have you got any I, honorable mentions? I, we'll go in okay. order. Uh, I got one. Right. Kids own pizza company. Really? For, for two words. Pizza fries. Pizza, I knew you were going to oh, say that. Yeah. I'm surprised Darren didn't have that, actually. Yeah. Like, I didn't I know those. if we could list pizza fries on our main list, so it had to be <laughs> the secondary because they were amazing. Look, at the end yes. of the day, if you'd have wanted to put the kids own pizza mm-hmm. company in for that one reason, I would have let you have it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a meal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It Just was like delicious. candy. I needed to come back this year. <laughs> I think they will. It seems to have been a very popular thing at Horror Nights this year. Yeah. I'll, I'll actually go last because mine's a long, nice. long list. Darren, what's, uh, what, what have you got for honorable mentions? Well, if you're going to honorable mention that, then I, I understand how ironic this is right now. I don't know if this was when we were recording or not, but we were just talking about having hot dogs on your pizza and how ridiculous <laughs> yeah. that is. <laughs> But putting hot dog, a whole hot dog in the crust, I think, is a brilliant mm. idea. An entire hot dog all the way down the length of the crust of the pizza. And that was at Horror Nights a couple of years ago. Ooh. It was a, a staple of 25, and I think they had it at 26 as well, right? Right. Do you know so what? Like, We've right. never tried any of the food that. at Horror Nights. Yeah, what it, yeah, it was. Uh, you could get it. Uh, you know where like Insidious, uh, all, those, all the tent yeah. houses all dump out of the same place over by Men in Black? Yes. Like back in there, they had like a little yeah. food stand. And yes, that's I remember walking past. A pizza. Oh, yes. Yeah. And that's the pizza that was in it, was the pizza with the hot dog and the crust. It's like a pepperoni pizza, just normal New York style pepperoni pizza, but the crust, they just, with a hot they dog. just folded it over and put a hot dog in yeah. it. Oh, my God, that sounds amazing. Man, I feel like I missed out. Uh, me yes. too. You take the whole thing and just roll it up. Oh, my God. So you've got the hot dog with a pizza rolled around it. Yeah, oh. it's amazing. I just had to say, why do we wait until we're hungry to eat? We're on holiday. Just eat. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't eat a lot the last time we were no. over. True, no. um, but my other uh, my other one is a uh, was another great uh, drunk food that I've had <laughs> at Universal, and uh, nothing was better than drinking all day and then going to the London area and getting a baked potato, <laughs> with broccoli and cheddar on there, and just sitting in the London area, you know, on the doorsteps of thirteen, <laughs> you know, the, the thirteen grim old place, grim old place. That's right. And uh, and eating a baked potato in the middle of universe. <laughs> Did you just <laughs> say broccoli? Yeah, broccoli that's, and cheddar yeah. on top of the baked potato. That sounds weird. Say, that's oh, so British. So Not. I have so never good. ever heard anybody have a, a jacket potato with broccoli and cheese on it. Cheese, yeah. yes. Beans oh, yeah. and cheese. Yeah. Tuna. Good stuff. Not good broccoli. Stuff, so. Broccoli. Weird. Yeah. And no one knows it's there. It's this little stand. No one knows you can buy a baked potato and eat it in the middle of the park. <laughs> mm. It's very quintessentially British, isn't it? I do it? like a good potato. jacket potato. Yes. Yeah. Me, obviously, Florian Ford, excuse, I didn't have in my list. Uh-huh. And I, 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 I still kind of wish I'd put it in there. Right. Um, my, my crappy one, the nostalgia thing, was Mel's. 
The burgers are crap. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're Service terrible. I, but actually... we did it at Horror Nights <laughs> twice, yeah. and it just it has that memory of a sitting with Jesse the first time. They were very the, flat burgers. Um, it was it was literally before we saw all the set pieces down Icon Alley mm-hmm. um, with Jesse on that first night we went, and then the second time we ate there was um, we got our food there, and then went and sat on the curb to wait for the Jack. carnage, yeah. the carnage return show. Oh, yeah. So it's very much a a Halloween Horror Nights 25 nostalgia thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Other than that, nothing really. All I remember about the last time we went to Mel's is we we sat there and waited to order, and the guy was, apparently there was too many orders. They put in orders too fast. So the guy was just having us stand there and wait at the, at the you know, his stand to order food. Um, and once it got to about, oh, seven or eight minutes of this, and we went, Really? Are we still gonna? Uh, we still gotta wait to order our food here, and we just left. Yeah, yeah. I've gotta, I think I've we would have done. I've got to say though, I do remember we had quite a wait in there. Not really. Well, we were just standing there, like at the thing, like yeah. waiting to order. Yeah, but they hadn't even ordered. That's what he's saying. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, not yet. No, not yet. See, so that that was a little odd. Yeah, Mel's has made my list, but for the coffee. See, only yeah. I, I only had coffee twice Don't even when we were over there. One. And that was can, from Mel's, and it was good coffee. And if anybody tells me it's Starbucks, I'm not going to be very happy. So <laughs> nobody tell me it's Starbucks. If, no, if it was yeah. Starbucks, it'd be spotted no, all it over was, the place. No, it wasn't. It was Nescafe. No. Kenko. Will you shut your face? I don't know what coffee it is, but I can't think. Anyway. Um, I also I have a leaky cauldron down. Did you not have it in your no, list at I all? No, I didn't have it in my list. Oh, yeah. yeah huh. That was my number six. Uh, Schwab's Pharmacy. Yeah, I nearly put that. Because that was amazing. Just never That's been fun. open since. Um, yeah, Croissant Moon Break- Bakery is on there. Uh, corn dogs and churros. Yeah, I love a corn Although dog I don't think I can eat corn dogs anymore because I can't eat hot dogs because of the spice in them that <laughs> cripples me now because I'm old. And uh, the other one I've got actually is the pizza from Cafe 4. You actually quite enjoyed it. It was didn't really you? good pizza. Oh, yeah. So, Thunder Falls Terrace is bad. Is great too. All right. Where was that? Sorry. Meatball Subby said from there is good as well. I see. It's at Cafe Four. Yeah. It's yeah. Really good. Pizza Place at Universal Studios too. I mentioned that. I did, I never thought about it, but then went with uh, Thomas Where's that? Wagner last time he came. What was it? What is it called? Is it Luigi's? Oh, oh uh, right, yeah. Lou's. Oh, Louis. Louis. Yeah. Louis. 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 Italian Louis. restaurant. Louis. Yeah, yeah, in New York. That one is really good pizza there. Okay. Yeah, surprisingly good, and it's like yeah, off to the side, and mm-hmm. you don't really think about it, but yeah, and we it's, met. it's also technically two slices. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Because <laughs> they cut a large pizza into four slices, so okay, oh, yeah. right. So I'll throw in green eggs and ham. I like green eggs and ham, and I'm gutted that it's closed. I now. liked it the first, the first it time, the second peppered. time, it, the, the, it was over peppered. I like it like that. I don't mind that though. I enjoy yeah, but it. when you've got three people that can't eat it because it's too peppery, that's a waste of money. Yeah, I do not like it. I, yeah, I do I not do like, like Greenex. Green <laughs> I do not like Greenex. <laughs> <laughs> I do not like this, am I am. So, so very much so, exactly what we said, that me, you and Darren are very much in sync and Chris was the wild card. We've got Good. Yes. We'll, 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 we'll get him sorted, don't Sorry, guys, I'm the wild card here. No, it's good. It's you nice enjoy to have that while somebody, it lasts. somebody in there that isn't. <laughs> kind of like on the same not necessarily on the same wavelength but has a different opinion and appreciation of different stuff rather than it all being let's talk about our number one we've all got the same thing yeah (laughs) yeah so cool I enjoyed that I think think we covered a a good wide variety next one we have to do top five worst places bottom five then (laughs) I know what my number one is right now really yeah I'd say it was more of a number two but there we go (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes well I guess we should wrap that up then um, I don't know how long that show's run it's, it feels like it was potentially a, a bit of a shorter one an hour ten oh, okay it was a longer one <laughs> what do I know um, so you know let us know what you think let us know what your top fives are definitely yeah you know I'd be interested to, to see whether you agree or disagree with us and nobody can tell me where the coffee's from from Mel's if it's Starbucks <laughs> um, so I've been Tracy and with me have been Lee, Darren and Chris thank you for listening and this has been episode 284 of the Unofficial Universal Orlando Podcast Cut 
print. That's a wrap for another episode of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Never miss a show by subscribing on Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating and review while you're there. Not an Apple user? You can listen on Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, iHeartRadio, or your podcatcher of choice. Email us any questions or comments to podcast at uuopodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest. Just search UUO Podcast. Keep up with the latest news, rumors, and updates on our blog at uuopodcast.com. Thanks for listening. See you next week.